everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Charlotte. I'm a nursing student at AUT. I love reading and I try to upload a video on my channel every Monday. Today's video is part of my new series, Nursing 101, where I teach you guys the things that I've been learning at university. And today we're going to be covering radial pulses and how to take one. This series is kind of just a little way for me to revise as well as just providing like a cute little tutorial for you guys as well if you're interested in this kind of stuff. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all of that good stuff but for now I think let's just dive right in. So first of all what actually is a pulse? So a pulse is a movement of blood that can be felt at certain areas of the body such as in the neck, behind the knee and as we're discussing today in the crook of your wrist just here which is your radial pulse. The pulse rate is the total number of pulsing sensations that you can feel within 60 seconds timing when palpating one of these areas. In Potter and Perry's Fundamentals of Nursing they describe a pulse as an indicator of the fluid wave created by ventricular contraction and therefore of the adequacy of circulatory status. So this pretty much means that a pulse is an indicator of the amount of blood being pushed through the body by the heart as the ventricles of the heart contract and therefore pulses are indicators of how well the body's cardiovascular system is performing. This brings us on to our next topic which is why we take pulses as part of our vital signs assessment. As just stated, pulses are indicators of cardiovascular performance and the body's circulatory system, which means by taking a pulse we can get a good idea of whether or not the cardiovascular or circulatory system is performing as it should. It is also well established that having two or more critical vital signs is linked with higher mortality. It's also established that sudden or gradual changes in a person's vital signs can be indicators of life-threatening health issues, so it's important to assess the pulse rate along with the other vital signs to ensure that your patient is stable and to detect life-threatening health changes early. So the next thing that we're going to be covering are the different pulse parameters for different age groups. Your pulse is measured in beats per minute and depending on how old you are those parameters are going to be different. So I'm just going to go through all of them. This is based on the table found in the Potter and Perry's Fundamentals of Nursing textbook. Um, there may be some very variations depending on which textbooks you look at but this is just the ones that we've been taught. For infants your expected parameters is 120 to 160 beats per minute. For toddlers the expected pulse rate is between 90 to 140 beats per minute. For preschoolers the expected parameters are 80 to 110 beats per minute. In school aged children the expected parameters are 75 to 100 beats per minute. In adolescents, the expected parameters are 60 to 90 beats per minute. And in healthy adults, the expected parameters are 60 to 100 beats per minute. Just kind of expanding on this, two um, health conditions that you should be aware of which relate to pulse are bradycardia, which is a pulse rate of less than 60 beats per minute, and trachycardia, which is a pulse rate of more than 100 beats per minute. So with a regular pulse, you expect the beats to come one after the other with um, a regular interval occurring between each beat. So if we've got five pulses, for example, we expect each interval between each pulse to be the same length. Whereas if you've got an irregular pulse, the interval between each pulse could vary. If those um, gaps, the intervals between each beat are different to each other, um, or you miss a beat for example, that is described as an irregular pulse and it can indicate an abnormal rhythm which is also known as arrhythmia. Not sure if I've said that right, I'll write it on this on the screen. Arrhythmias are quite serious because they affect the heart's ability to provide adequate cardiac output if it occurs repetitively. When you're taking a patient's pulse, if an arrhythmia is present, you need to assess how regular the arrhythmia is occurring. To do this, we describe arrhythmias as either regularly irregular or irregularly irregular. So moving on to the strength of a pulse. So the strength of a pulse um, is a reflection of the volume of blood being ejected against the arterial wall with every heart contraction. The strength of a pulse should remain the same with each heartbeat and they can be described as either being bounding, a strong, weak or freddy. And finally talking about equality, when you're assessing a pulse, the pulse rate, rhythm and strength should be the same on both 
of pulse sites. So if you're taking a radial pulse, whatever observations you are taking note of in this wrist should be the same in the other wrist. Okay so all symmetrical pulses can be assessed uh, simultaneously apart from the carotid pulses so these are the ones in your neck. Carotid pulses should never be um, assessed at the same time because excessive pressure can prevent the blood flow to your brain and obviously we don't want that so you can assess any other symmetrical pulse at the same time apart from the ones in your neck. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the more exciting stuff where I'm going to actually demonstrate how to take somebody's radial pulse. So here I've got my lovely mum who's agreed to help me out with this demonstration. Just for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to already assume that I have confirmed my mum's identity, but reassured her, got an informed consent, cleaned all of my equipment before I come into the room to visit my patient. I have also made sure that I have given my mum privacy from other patients and staff, and I'm also going to make sure that my position in relation to her is not domineering or um, seems overpowering as well. I've also sanitized my hands, cleaned my hands, fulfilling the first and second moments of hand washing, which is before touching a patient and before beginning a procedure. So firstly, if your patient has already had their baseline vitals taken, you need to refer to these first just so that you can make some kind of comparison with your own assessment. So first make sure that your patient is in a sitting or a supine position just because it provides easier access to their pulse site. So the radial pulse is found in the crook of the wrist and that's where we're going to be um, feeling the pulse today. If your patient is supine or lying down, just make sure that their arm is placed beside them. Again, just for easier access. If your patient is sitting um, upwards like this, you can get your patient to put their elbow in a 90 degrees angle with their palm facing upwards. You can get them to flex their elbow slightly just, uh, sorry, their wrist slightly so that you get easier access and so that the pulse is more um, palpable. So you're going to, with your patient's permission, do I have permission to touch your wrist? You do. You're going to place the pads of your first two or three fingers just in the crook of their wrist where the radial pulse is found. And remember to never ever use your thumb to take a pulse because you have a pulse in your thumb, meaning that if you take a patient's pulse with your thumb, you may end up picking up your own pulse instead of the patient's and that will be incorrect, obviously. So you're going to compress your two to three fingers against the radius just applying a bit of pressure. Just remember that everybody's a little bit different, so some people you're going to have to apply more pressure or less pressure to be able to feel the pulse um, accurately. So kind of expanding on that, if you put too much um, pressure on a person's pulse, you may not actually feel their pulse at all just because um, you're impairing their blood flow. The first one that you're going to do when you are taking a person's pulse is first assess the strength and regularity, making sure um, to take note of whether it's strong, fretty, bounding or weak and also to making sure if, is it regular or irregular and if it's irregular is it regularly irregular or irregularly ir irregular which we've already spoken about in the um, first parts of this video. After you've assessed the strength and um, regularity of their pulse, now you can start timing and make like assessing their pulse properly. So using your fob watch, begin timing with the first pulse being counted after timing commences. If you don't have a patient's baseline pulse rate, you need to be timing for a full 60 seconds in order to get an accurate measure of their pulse. However, if their pulse is regular and you already have their baseline, you are able to time for 30 seconds and then multiply whatever score you got by 2. However, just keep in mind that the longer you time for, the more accurate your results will be, so you can still um, time for 60 seconds even if you already have their baseline. If their pulse is irregular, however, you need to time for a full 60 seconds, again just to ensure that you get the accuracy of their pulse rate. Again, make sure that you're, you've got consent from your patient to touch their wrist. Place your two to three fingers in the crook of their wrist and press against their radius, um, enough pressure to be able to feel their pulse accurately, assess for the strength and regularity, and then after that time for 60 seconds or 30 seconds times two if it's a regular and if it's regular and you already have their baseline. Let's just say now that I've timed 
for 60 seconds, I've gotten my, my patient's pulse. What you're going to do now is you're going to record it in your patient's notes and make sure, make sure that you document it clearly. If the, in the event you pick up signs of bradycardia or tachycardia, which is high and um, low heart rate, you need to make a note of this in the patient notes and then also inform your nurse in charge immediately. So thank you very much for helping me out with this demonstration. So that was today's video where we just ran over all of the basics of taking a person's radial pulses. As always, I hope you found the video helpful or interesting, um, and I would love to hear in the comments what you guys would like to see me do for my nursing one-on-one -on -one series next. And also just feedback, questions, um, anything, just drop a comment. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all of that good stuff, and I hope you have a lovely day and a fabulous week and I'll see you next Monday with a new video. So bye!